Well, after the creation of the world, something goes bad. The world takes a terrible turn. See, God created the first human beings to be in relationship with him and with one another and to follow his purposes on the earth. But human beings said, no, we want to go our way, both in our attitude and our actions. And what it really means to sin is to turn aside from God and go in a different direction. So as a result of this first sin, the fall of humanity, God actually passes judgment on sin. God's not down with sin and evil doing. Rather than what people are created for, we turn aside and he cast out of, cast us out of the paradise of the Garden of Eden. Now, forever life would be marred and haunted by sin and death. Our relationship with God and one another become broken, fractured. The world would be now a mingled mess, right? With lots of great good, but lots of seriously depth of evil. Light and darkness together, sin and sadness along the way. The Bible summarizes it this way in Romans chapter five. Just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, in this way, death spread to all people because all sinned. Now, here's the good news, guys. God, it was not his plan to allow his purposes to be defeated and his people to be abandoned. In fact, right at the beginning of the Bible, when people turn aside from God and sin, he's rolling forth his plan to redeem people, to take what is broken and bring them back. He would send a savior born of a woman to redeem those under the brokenness of sin. There's an old Christmas carol I want to share with you that recounts the promise, right, of a coming redemption that God will bring through Jesus Christ. It says this, no more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found. Now, Romans 6, 23 teaches us, for the wages of sin is death but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Redemption is coming. It came with Christ. It's coming into your life and mine today and to eternity. And we hit that third period comeback, redemption. We'll hit that next. So here's the good news, friends. Creation, good. Fall, brokenness, and sin, and death. But God did not abandon the world. His purpose was, even though we sin and rebel against God, he's always pursuing people with both love and justice. I love this passage in John chapter three. It says this, for God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son, that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son, Jesus, into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. What each of us needs to understand is that though we sin and we turn aside from God, none of us is perfect, uh, God was compelled by love to send Jesus into the world to pay the penalty for our sins, to offer people full forgiveness and save us from the consequences and penalty of sin. Now, I'm gonna do something risky and share with a bunch of wrestling people a basketball illustration. Now, I think it'll make sense, but in 2008, the United States men's Olympic basketball team was given the name, the Redeem Team. Now, it's a little bit of a riff on Dream Team that Michael Jordan and all those Larry Bird played on, Magic Johnson, but they were called the Redeem Team for a reason. You see, the Olympic basketball team of the United States, we invented basketball, got their behinds whooped, in the Olympics and the World Championships in 2006. Now this situation was a, uh, was a deal that needed to be turned around. It needed to take a bad situation and redeem it. Redemption should come. Now we don't play basketball, at least I don't. I'm 5'7", short, stocky wrestler. But I understand what it means to have a great comeback. And in the Bible, we see the greatest comeback of all time. The word redemption means to take something in a bad state, a broken state, and transform it into something glorious and good. It means God is taking back what belongs to him in saving people from sin, death, and hell. 
It means having a debt that we owe for sins paid in full and that only Jesus is the one who pays it. Now, Jesus redeems us by dying a death that we deserved and giving us a life we did not earn. The Bible says it this way. In Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins according to the riches of God's grace, which he poured out richly upon us with all wisdom and understanding. Jesus says it so clearly, no greater love that that anyone has than this, than to lay his life down for his friends. Redemption means Jesus laid down his life for us. He gave everything to pay for our sins. Now we have the wonderful opportunity to see how does that work out in my life? If I see Jesus dying on a cross, how does that get applied to me? How does redemption, the story of redemption, God saving, redeeming, and making all things new, how does that story become my story? How does it get applied to you and to me?